Welcome to Driftful Guitars. I'm Chris. Behind the camera is Matt, as always. And we actually have new, new swaggies. Ooh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we oh. went and picked them up today. Matt got all excited when he uh, we found out that our local embroidery shop has Carhartt. So we bought Carhartt shirts. Listen, if you know, you know, okay? I, I don't think that most of our viewership, I don't need to sell them on what Carhartt yeah. is or why it's great. Matt grew up on a farm, so he was like, Carhartt? <laughs> I kind of lost it, like, like an embarrassing amount in the middle of this retail space in front of everybody. So we have, me and Matt have work shirts, we've got some hats now. If you guys are interested in some hats, let us know. Maybe we'll, I don't know, we had no intention in selling them, but it'd be nice to... We already sell guitars, I don't know what we'd do with merch, but yeah, why not? Today I wanted to show you guys this thing, this beast of a guitar, which actually is my very first guitar I ever built. And uh, we're gonna start from the top, kind of work our way down and tell you a little bit about how I got into guitar building. Maybe give you some advice if you're looking at getting into building guitars on your own. Okay, so we'll have Matt come in a little bit closer so you can kind of get a good look at this. So if you could start from the top there uh, while he does that. So I have I have some <laughs> obvious questions. <laughs> so, well, and yeah, I don't, I don't have a weathered eye, but. <laughs> <laughs> so this was my first guitar, like I said, it is based off of an OM design. Um, it is a European spruce top, a mahogany neck uh, with, I think it's called Palo Escrito. I was, is this a kit or did you, did you do this all from scratch? So this guitar was completely from scratch and um, it's actually based off of um, a book that I ended up getting from Stumac. I'm going to go uh, figure out what that book was. I think they still sell it at Stumac or at LMI. I'll um, put a link in the description so you guys can see. But the book was kind of like a how to build an acoustic guitar and it came with blueprints. Um, and the reason why I built it from scratch and I ended up kind of landing on this avenue of scratch building versus kit building, uh, and I'm grateful for it, actually was because I really wanted a cutaway because in my mind, this was gonna be like the best guitar in the world. Like I was gonna build like, nobody had ever seen anything this good before in their lives in my mind. So. I'm gonna build it with a cutaway. And the kits that are out there, were out there, and that are still out there as far as I know, uh, and if you guys know of any other places, let me know. But I know Martin Guitars, you can buy kits directly from them, and Stumac sells kits in both the, um, the 00028 12 fret uh, and a, um, a Dreadnought. Great kits, fantastic kits. Um, but I really wanted a cutaway, and both of those kits, if I remember correctly, came with the sides already bent. Um, so I was, that's, that was the big thing for me. So anyway, I bought this book um, and built it, having no idea on how to build an acoustic guitar. I had n not even a clue. And the funny thing looking back on it is like, <laughs> it's gonna sound terrible, uh, but this book basically kind of taught some ways that like nobody really uses um, in the steel string world. Uh, like, so this neck actually is a, is, a, is a Spanish style neck joint where like, those of you may or may not know, but like you build this on a sol sol Solera, I think is what it's called. It's been so long. It's been like since 2007, so it's been a while. <laughs> Was that 15 years? 14 years? 14 years. Uh, and uh, so basically you build the neck and then the whole body is built around the heel of the neck. So you can never take this neck off. Like it's all integrated. It's how they build classical guitars. Kind of how I got into guitar building, um, I, when I was growing up as a kid, my dad and I really uh, used to make things together and we got, uh, well, it was my idea. I really wanted to fly remote control airplanes. This was back in the early 90s. And uh, of course my dad like latched onto that and he got really into it as well. And we started building um, remote control airplanes from scratch um, with balsa wood and gas powered motors and all that stuff. So I kind of got the, the, um, the itch for making things. And um, as I became an adult, I, I continued to always want to be tinkering with stuff. and. I joined the Air Force after 9-11 happened and um, I, I kind of like built airplanes, kind of was my job. I was a structural maintenance guy, sheet metal. Um, and so that kind of got me building and making things on like a bigger level. And so one of the first things that I started doing once I was in the Air Force was I started to work on cars. Um, I started painting airplanes, I'm sorry, painting cars and uh, building turbo kits for cars. And that got me kind of excited about working with clients and all that stuff, but it, for some reason it still wasn't like, it wasn't quite the thing that really scratched my itches. So fast forward a few years, I moved to Alaska and started playing music on the weekends, kind of doing open mic nights and stuff like that with my acoustic guitar. And um, 
I really wanted to get into woodworking. Uh, I wanted to kind of like start making furniture or, or things like that. I, I didn't really, I just knew that like woodworking sounded fun. Um, and uh, a guy that I work with, uh, who was into woodworking, I used to pick his brain, like talk about, I mean, I want to get a table saw or whatever. Uh, he came into work one day with a, with a Stratocaster that he had built over the weekend or, you know, probably over the course of several weeks, I'm sure. And uh, it was like an epiphany moment for me that I don't know why, but I had not even thought for a second about building an acoustic guitar. And it was just like a, like a holy shit moment for me. Uh, and I just knew right away, that's what I want to do. I want to build an acoustic guitar. And I remember him very specifically like being like, uh, you can't just go out and build an acoustic guitar. Like an electric guitar is hard, but like an acoustic guitar is like a whole nother animal. Um, so I got online as one does. And uh, especially back in, this was probably in 04, 05. Yeah, this is in like 2005. There's not a lot of information out there, especially on the interwebs about acoustic guitar building. Cause uh, especially at the time it was, it's an old man's game. <laughs> It just is, uh, it's getting less and less of that, but uh, uh, the only thing I was able to really find was um, a couple of books that they sold at Stumac and they sold at LMI. I don't remember the name of the book, but I'm gonna find it once we're done recording and put a link to it in the description. But I remember the book, it came with blueprints, so I bought it because it was like, cool, it comes with blueprints too. Uh, and the book was literally page one, page two, page three, like steps on how you do each part of the guitar build. And uh, I read that book probably a hundred times from front to back before I even ordered wood. And then kind of convinced my wife at the time, like, this is something I want to do. It's going to be expensive because the wood's not cheap. And I, I literally didn't own any tools. And then I just started building it. And then this is the result of, I don't remember, but it's probably a six months, I would say, to build this guitar. Because I was just messing with it at nighttime and, you know, on the weekends and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is the result of it. And um, that's why the guitar looks the way that it does because this is based off of the blueprints that that, uh, that book came with. And uh, I think nowadays there's so much more resources out there on, on what you can come up with. You can see obviously like it's got, like this is a very Martin-esque bridge. Uh, the headstock looks like a tailor. Um, obviously it's kind of an OM. It's incredibly chunky looking and uh, it looks super beat up because it's lived in my attic for about I don't know, probably eight years. So that's why it looks the way that it does. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of where I started out and show you what, oh, I'm show you the back. Super fancy wood. <laughs> this is some sort of like a Home Depot rattle can uh, lacquer, I think too. It's, uh, it's special. So what's a piece of advice you'd offer someone that maybe is in the middle of their first build? Cause I mean, six months, that's a long time. Let's say you're in, you know, month three or month four and you're, you know, discouraged, like? Well, I would say, A, you're gonna be discouraged probably, especially even more so than I was back when I was building because now like with the internet, uh, with YouTube or Instagram and stuff like that, you're gonna feel like you're terrible at this. You know, you're looking at people like me who've been doing it for 15 years and your mind looks nothing like that. Um, but I guess my biggest piece of advice would be to finish the guitar, finish the first guitar. It's gonna be terrible, but, um, the, 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 the beauty of your first guitar is that you have no idea what you're doing other than kind of like what you're reading or what you're seeing online. So every step is exciting and new, but you're gonna not do it the best. You're not gonna do it right. So you need to build and do every single step on the guitar from joining the top to bracing it, to voicing it, to closing the box up, to attaching the neck. And then you need to follow through and then put the strings on it and then try to do the setup because the guitar is probably not gonna sound great, it's not gonna look great, the finish is gonna be terrible, uh, and it's probably not gonna play super great. And the reason why it doesn't do any of those things very well is because you've never done it before. But the beauty is, when you go to do your second one, you will have done every single step. So your second guitar is gonna be a lot better. And I, and I, and I, have, I know there's so many people that get halfway through their first guitar, and then they just chuck it, and then they get started on their second one because they feel like, oh, I'll, I don't know what I was doing, and now I feel like I do. So I'm just gonna finish this one and start on my second one. Well, the problem is, um, on your second guitar, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get to the halfway point where you stopped <laughs> on the last guitar, and yeah, that part was better. And now you you haven't made all these other mistakes. So you 
so this, all those other things are going to be not very good. So uh, I think you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, make all the mistakes on the first one so that you can make them a little bit less on the next one. With that said, it's going to take you many, many guitars to get good at it. What was it you, you always told me? Embrace the suck? Embrace the suck, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the cool thing about this guitar for me is it's like a time capsule. It like represents all the things that I didn't know. It's weird like looking back on this. Um, now having built, I think I've built like 82 guitars, um, as you can see what I didn't know, but there's also a certain beauty in it, like in not knowing. And this was just something fun to do too, you know, and here I am, you know, 14 years later making my living doing it. Um, it's just who would have thought, I just, I, I certainly didn't. That's that's the biggest thing for me that I, that I see a lot of people do. And the second thing that I think a lot of new first-time builders do is that they have it in their head that this guitar is going to be the greatest thing ever and they want it they set the bar super super high and it's good to have like high standards but don't go out and spend a bajillion dollars on super high grade top woods uh, like I was telling Matt earlier like this is I bought of course I had to right the master grade European spruce instead of like oh the the, the double A or the triple A no I needed the master grade even though I had never even built a guitar in my life like what's the point of the master grade like this is, was never going to be a good guitar um, save some money and don't get the best woods it's certainly please for the love of God don't go out and get Brazilian rosewood to build your first guitar um, say if you get a good deal on it buy it but put it on a shelf and use it for at least your second guitar but please dear God don't do it on your first because it's just not going to be that great. I don't have my second guitar. I wish I had it. Uh, it ended up a hundred times better than this one. So the difference between my first guitar and my second guitar was like 50 fold as far as the, the amount of better that it was. And then my third one was a lot better than that. So it's like, that's what I'm getting at. It becomes so exponential as you build build guitars. Is get, get good materials, but don't get the best materials and understand that like this whole process is gonna be a process of you learning. And you're going to be limited by what tools you have. A, a, a big piece of advice that I would give people and that I hope that this channel does is that it just gives you permission to just jump in and try it. Because for me, this hobby of guitar building was completely life-changing for me. A, it's super satisfying. It's, make, it's making me a better guitar player. It makes me a better guitar owner. It makes me more patient in life because being a guitar builder, there's nothing, I can't think of anything else that's gonna teach you more patience than guitar building. Um, it teaches you how to overcome uh, mistakes and challenges, things that translate into real life things. And so don't think that you need to watch 100 videos or that you need to read 50 books or that you need to, to be a, an expert on any one thing before you get into guitar building. I've been noticing like a theme in the comment section of like, you know, oh, I bought wood for a guitar two years ago and this video inspired me to finally get started on it. I think a lot of people are waiting for that right moment to get started building and they think that like there's gonna be this magical day when they have permission to do so. Well, give yourself the permission to just get started. Um, you, not, you don't need to wait till you go out and buy this new fancy tool. Just get into it and start figuring it out because it's so satisfying and it's so fun. Yeah, I just want, I think everybody should build a guitar. Because <laughs> remember folks, if I can do it, you can do it. It's, it's, it's incredibly difficult, but you put the time and the effort into it and it's really fun. And you don't have to be good at it. You don't have to be great at it. It can just be fun. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and that, that whether that's playing music or, or building guitars, it's the same thing. It's not really, you don't have to be an expert at it. Give yourself permission to not be good at it, um, because that's where the real learning is, and that's where the real that's where the real fun is. Honestly, like I had probably more fun building guitars when it was still just a hobby, because there was this level of like everything was new, absolutely every step was something to look forward to and something to learn from. Whereas now it's kind of like a rinse and repeat. Um, I still I still love it, but. Uh, just remember to embrace the suck, as, as Matt and I always say, and uh, remember that that's where the beauty in guitar building is. Tell me a little bit about how you guys got into this, whether you built a kit for your first guitar or you built a guitar from scratch. Share, share us your favorite stories from your first build, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe tell us like how your first guitar was horrible. <laughs> because, like I said, for this one, for me, it had, only had strings on it for like maybe two, three hours. Um, it played so badly. But uh, I'm glad that I have it. I'm glad I never, I was almost threw it out probably 10 times. Uh, and I'm so glad that I didn't. If 
Anything doesn't more embody uh, measure twick kadunk. <laughs> yes, measure twick kadunk. And if you guys don't know what that means, well, I'll have to show you a little little sticker on what we mean by the measure twick kadunk. And uh, you guys, make sure you like and subscribe. And we will go through all of the building process of an acoustic guitar and hopefully teach you how to build a better guitar than this. But in the meantime, just get started. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. <laughs>